Recently, the flying experience has become more unhealthy, more unclean, and more uncomfortable. For the enormous cost that we pay to fly, there are other transaction costs, such as finding the perfect flight, uh, paying for transportation to and from the airport, and worrying about your back. But the most enormous cost is the cost to our health. Um, being on flight has been more and more depressing. Recently, I was on flight, and there were crumbs left over on my seat, and leftover trash, and who knows what else is there invisible to the eye. I want to propose to you some uh, solutions that have not worked in the past um, to deal with unclean planes as a risk to our health show you with some solutions that will work. Uh, the problem is health and cleanliness on the flight. Recently, Ebola has been a big concern and has passed through borders, through air travel. Planes have proved to be an optimal place for viruses to spread. The cause is financial. Um, Dr. Michael Drakeland, a former FAA official from 19 and 2014, said that airplanes are only making profit when they're flying, so it's a question of financing. So that means that base will, uh, planes will be sitting at the base for a shorter amount of time, meaning that there will be less time put to cleaning the planes. Dr. Drakeland also says to remember that the CDC is not an enforcement agency. They do not have <coughs> deputies that go and enforce all the guidelines that God has given them. That's a huge problem with trying to finance and force cleaning. The World Health Organization, under their Chapter 8 of their uh, aviation guidelines on aircraft and crew cleaning, um, they say that when aircraft commences a flight, the boarding passengers should clean an attractive and immaculate cabin area. Here the emphasis on, is on should. And they also say that the extent of cleaning is dependent, however, on the amount of time available. Jeff Bailey from New York Times, October 2006, says that cleanliness is next to godliness, but in the airline industry, it has taken a backseat to financial success. There are fewer employees to boost the revenue, and that means that there are fewer people to clean the planes. There's no food on planes for free, so that means that people are bringing garbage from outside sources. Um, and the FAA does not set cleanliness standards, so the issue is mainly one of public perception and of forcing us to be vigilant for our health. The crux of the problem are unhealthy customers and the spread of diseases, such as in 2009, there was the H1N1. Uh, many times when you come back from a flight, you have a little bit of a cold, um, and symptoms can range from any sort of mild to severe. It's a problem for everyone. Everyone involved in flying is because of the contact we have with people, with bags, with the tray tables, with seats. Um, it's also a problem for the people the destinations are going to because so many of these diseases do spread in children. Um, it's a problem also because these airline industries, which is a customer base of airplanes, is pulling profit over health. Why should you care? You should care because you could be made sick of someone else's health. It's urgent now, especially because of everything that's going on with Ebola and the tightening of the planes um, of the corporate uh, sectors of the world. This is a chart comparing six months um, of stock between American <coughs> Airlines, Delta Airlines, and JetBlue. And as you can see, this is just six months. As you can see, October, there's a huge increase in stock. People are more afraid. What, what should the FAA do? Um, the FAA should install UV lights um, when, that go on when everyone's out of the cabin. Um, a lot of people carry portable, mini UV lights, as you can see by the ceiling, and these um, kill 
the surface texture. Um, also, the FAA said to make your car tow truck. After everyone leaves this plane, they should wipe down bathrooms, um, anything that really could impact the environment. Um, they should also try to educate their passengers um, in why it's important to sanitize or to watch out for your health and to not spread any bacteria to other people. Um, Michelle Hagan from New York Times in 2011 uh, talks about a, an experiment that Charles Cooper did in 2007. He's a professor, a professor of environmental microbiology of the University of Arizona, and he swabbed um, eight flights as he robbed um, like tray tables in the bathroom, and four out of six tray tables tested positive for the superbug MRSA and for norovirus. And in the bathroom, there was a 30% um, over the course of the flight assumed E. coli in the bathroom with the faucets, the sinks, and the flushing. And also there was 20% show of E. coli um, in other parts of the bathroom. Um, so the deal is, what can you do? What can you do as a passenger? You can try to protect yourself. And you can do this by washing your hands and being vigilant. Unfortunately, we are at the cause of someone else's bad protocol. So we have to do what we can do. Um, and like Joe's saying, we should make sure that the FAA applies the same care that they do. 